story so far. Hubert is growing mustard and cress in his left ear and performs even the most intimate of office with his head inclined to one side. Sir Henry's neck has healed nicely and Mrs. Radcliffe has been banished from the house. Now read on. Dot, 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 dot. Loathsome young Gerald, having now been discovered in the upstairs tiniest room one too many times with a sporting magazine, though protesting, this is high art, and look how many times I've watched Sir Kenneth Clark civilise Acton, has had his hand and body smacked very eye-wateringly. Bubbling up from God Watts, Nemesis, clutching her wrath, took house in the snivelling imp, and the wretched boy, eyes glaring yellow caves of hatred, stalked off to Concreton, where, in cahoots with a tattooist, had every pimple on his weasel face permanently marked from one to one to six, making the magic nine. And thus disfigured would appear each morning these numbers heavily linked and inked with biro to, pre to present his horrid visage aghast with swastikas or shifted faces which with deep frowns and nasty use of his tongue and squinty eye he could make so horrid that breakfast guests would be quite sickened. Soon, fear scrubbed by great Aunt Flory, he must eat alone until, fat chance, the spots clear up. His ciphered face, seeming like a housewife effort at painting by numbers before she remembered a rice pudding left in the oven. Gerald also had taken to wearing safety pins through his eyelids because he didn't trust no one and wanted to be wide boy awake just in case it came to something. Over his door he scrawled, If you see something you don't understand, smash it. Florrie shuddered. Gerald's ghastly tattooed face would doubtless rank him even higher in the perverse estimations of Timothy and Letitia Maynard, which pair of near children would surely be visited on Rawlinson End for an extended day mare before the holiday ended. She remembered their last Christmas efforts at mince pies that had tasted so uncommonly meaty, and poor Nigel's concern about his missing corgi. Pray, Yesio, they'd lost interest in chemistry and dissection, that... That thing they'd let loose in the maze, crackling with wires, smoking, roaring and pouncing on the staff. A cross between a gorilla and a parrot, it would grip one round the neck and ask, Who's a pretty boy then? And those hateful songs to the rhythm of knives behind locked nursery doors. No, no, not again, surely.